for you. For uh, Charm TV, I think we're about to begin, uh, Mr. Chair. We're ready when you are. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's Thursday, January the 12th, 2023 docket. Um, it's a mixed docket. There will be some violations heard and followed by some regular items. Uh, are you ready to begin, Mr. Chair? Please. Starting with the violations. Violation item number one on the docket. Current Clubhouse LLC trading as current clubhouse. Premises are located at 421 North Howard Street. Holders of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license and are charged with one violation of the board rules to it, a violation of rule 3.12 general welfare stemming from an incident uh, from August 27th, 2022. Inspector Tudhope is the witness. I believe, and, and Inspector, Ch or Agent Chase. Is the licensee here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on up. Morning, everybody. Please raise your right hands. So when you speak, please step up to the microphone. We're being recorded and we're on television, so we need to get your names and whatever. Um, can you tell us your names, please? I'm Michael Benevento. Good morning. Julianne Hamilton. Good morning. Um, so you have you're charged with one violation of uh, rule 3.12 on august 27th of last year are you admitting or uh denying the violation uh denial okay um inspector do you want to go forward on august 27th 2022 at 9 10 p.m a 311 complaint was received for 421 North Howard Street at the establishment known as Current Space for Disturbing the Peace, uh, Noise, Loud Music. I, Inspector Tarot, along with Inspector Jordan, responded at approximately 9.40 p.m. And parked, uh, and parked in the parking lot located at the rear of the location. I, Inspector Tarot, could hear music playing at a high volume while seated in my car, coming from the stage area at the rear of the building. I, Inspector Tarop and Jordan entered the establishment and made contact with uh, Mr. Michael <coughs> Benevetto to make him aware of complaint. Mr. Benevetto stated that the live music would end at 10 p.m. and it always ends live music before 10 p.m. I, Inspector Tarop informed Mr. Benevetto that he would be receiving a violation for the music being extremely loud. The establishment received a previous warning from Asian Chase for the same complaint on 8-13-22, complaint number 22-00642482. I, Inspector Tarop, issued the violation and inspectors left the establishment without further incident. Do you have questions for the inspector? Um, I have a statement to read. No, I want to know if oh. you have any questions for the inspector. Not at this point. Okay. Inspector, do you have anything to add? No. Okay. You want to testify? Go ahead. Uh, I, I don't believe we were unreasonably loud. Uh, yes, we had an outdoor concert, but we were permitted to have outdoor live entertainment in our courtyard based on our UNO liquor license, assembly permit, and MOUs. Um, as supported by the decibel meter readings in the exhibits, uh, I sent those. Um, at the time of the citation, we were below the city's noise ordinance and we are much quieter than other existing outdoor live entertainment uh, venues like Pier 6, Power Plant, or Artscape. Um, previous to this citation, we submitted a sound mitigation plan to the Environmental Health Department, um, which included investing 10,000 in sound mitigation, and we continue to make improvements, and we were following this on that night. I think that an outdoor venue should be able to... Can I stop you for a second? I have a question for you. So when you were approached by the inspectors, you explained all this to them? Yes, they, yes, they arrived after the event had ended. Um, we'd also... It's not the testimony. The testimony was that they came in at 9-something and you said it would be over at 10. We... I, I have a question for him. So tell him, let's get it straight. What happened? Um, 
We remain open, but our live performances usually end before 10. You know, this time we so, so ended did early. Did you tell them about all this mitigation issue and what you, that you invested money in the sound system and all that sort of stuff when they came in? Um, I believe we came up with afterwards. Um, there's email documentation. No, it's all. I'm not saying you didn't do it. I'm just. Uh, they come in. They tell you that your music's too loud. Um, and then yes, I did express that I was surprised to get um, a violation because we'd been spending a lot of effort and been in communications with um, multiple different departments. So, but I, so this department is the. Uh, Commission of Liquor License Commission. What do we know? What did we know on that day? Um, at the time, we'd been. Yes, I did talk about how we've been spending a lot of effort to remediate okay. these issues. So, what's going on now? Since then, uh, you want to explain, ma'am? Um, yes, I just wanted to note that the liquor board had been copied on our communications about our sound mitigation plan mm -hmm. um, prior to this event. Okay. Um, and so what is, there's a lot of documents here that I don't have time to go through. Tell me what your sound mitigation plan is. You should talk about that. <laughs> I can. <sighs> was this before you got the license? Say that again? Uh, my records show that the license was transferred to you in July of 22. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And when, what's the date on, so when did these things occur? August 27th and August 13th are the three one ones uh, that were justified to by. All this mitigation oh. material. Uh, we've been in this location since 2010. Okay, so this occurred before you got the license. No, oh, or the, the sound mitigation, yes. Huh? Or the sound mitigation has been an ongoing thing, but uh, let me see. I think I the confusion is that these support letters that you've included in the record are dated and probably applicable to a previous hearing. It was for our liquor license application. Right, so it's not really applicable to this issue before us right now. Um, it was to show the level of community support that we have that continues to exist. Okay, okay. We're not denying any of that. We just said your music was too loud one night. <laughs> um, okay. So the, in the sound mitigation plans, we've done things like um, well, first of all, we're like s s intentionally located uh, in downtown in a commercial district, in an arts and entertainment district, in Market Center, um, next to the light rail, Route 40, um, an outdoor generator, ghost kitchen, so louder than normal ambient levels in an urban environment. Um, as part of our sound mitigation plan, we um, put planter beds like around the perimeter of the property. Um, we've been investing in microphones to kind of capture the sound and point the sound through our speakers to kind of point the, um, try to point the sound into our location rather than the perimeter of the property. And you did this when? Um, before, um, before the incident. Okay. Um, additionally, we uh, let me just go through my talking point. Um, we've hung uh, acoustic blankets around the the stage. Um, we invested in getting more directional, low frequency speakers so that the rear end of the in on low end f frequencies, they're more of a radial pattern, and so. We positioned a sub behind our subwoofer to cancel out the rear frequencies to kind of make it more directional. Um, we've also been consulting with sound engineers to get more information on how to control our uh, sound and point it more into the space. Um, we have multiple size sound systems for different types of events. Um, we've also invested in sound isolation boxes for like guitar amps and drum, like a basically a plexi box to put over instruments that we can't control as much. Um, so what's the nature of the music? It's popular music? Uh, it's a variety. So we do anything from poetry readings to live concerts to puppetry shows. Um, this was a music show that we were getting the violation on. Okay. Um, 
Uh, right. The commissioners have any questions? No questions. No questions. Um, Inspector, were they cooperative with you? Yes, sir, they're very cooperative always. And did he explain any of this to you when you were there? Um, he explained a couple of things to us, but um, not in that, that detail. He always says that they try to keep the music down as much as possible, and um, they always end at 10 p.m. Um, but they're always very cooperative when we go there. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, has there been any uh, new 311 complaints since August 27th? I believe so, but I can't recall going again. I do have one question. Go let them answer. Uh, did you want to respond to the commissioner? Um, I wanted to respond that um, one of the issues that we're having is that 311 complaints require no proof. Um, in one of the exhibits that I sent you, we've gotten 311, a 311 complaint. we send the inspectors out? One of the complaints we got was for an event that was canceled. Yeah, I, the complaints on their own don't mean anything, but if the yeah. inspectors go out and um, verify it, that's a different story. Complaint driven, yeah. Um, her. When, when you first came to the space, is it accurate that you weren't totally sure if we were allowed to have outdoor entertainment? Because that was on the initial citation. Yes, and as you can see, we never charge you for it because we have verified it back in the office that you were allowed. Um, I guess did that. Oh, go um, ahead. And are there very many other outdoor spaces that you, um, many other like live entertainment outdoors that you have experience with where they actually are allowed to be doing it? Because I watched a lot of the court TV stuff to prepare for this and saw that almost every time. You watch court TV to train for a hearing? <laughs> <laughs> I watch hours of court TV to prepare for this. Um, because well, we're really. A form of TV now. I know, so. I know. Well, no, this court TV. I mean, I watched a lot of these hearings oh, because oh, oh, okay. we, it's not the fine that we're so worried about here that we sent all this documentation and prepared for this. It's the precedent that it sets. We really want to be able to do these events continuing. We want to bring prominent names to Baltimore, and if we don't know if we're going to get a violation for doing what we believe we're within our rights to do, what is within the noise ordinance limits, then that makes it really hard for us. I understand. Okay. Uh, we've got a long docket, so let's move along, okay? Um, I, I'm ready to uh, prepare to rule on this. <coughs> Commissioner's okay? I'm yeah. good. All right. <coughs> I also have a statement, if I'm able to read. Who are you? Our MOU partner. Okay, were you sworn in? No. Were you sworn in? No. You have to raise your right hand. You swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give in the statements that you make to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. My name is Emily Breiter, and I'm the executive director of the Bromo Arts District and the director of economic development and arts initiatives at Downtown Partnership of Baltimore. I am here on behalf of both organizations to show our full support for Current Space, which is within both of our districts. Downtown Partnership is one of the community partners on Current Space's Memorandum of Understanding for their liquor license. They have upheld all requirements of the liquor license and closely monitor their volume level for permitted outdoor entertainment. Sorry, my mask is <laughs> hard to breathe there. Uh, Current Space is an important and committed community member within the Bromo Arts District and downtown. They've been at their location for 13 years and have continued to expand during that time to offer a unique and welcoming <coughs> entertainment venue that supports local artists and attendees. Current Space is located within a commercial, not residential zone. Even still, their staff is respectful of all neighbors especially their newest residential neighbors, and stops all live music performances by 10 p.m. on evenings with outdoor music. Current Space does sound checks during all programming to make sure the volume is within the levels stated in the city ordinance. Regardless, singular complaints are made nearly every evening Current hosts outdoor programming, and even on evenings when they have no programming. I've personally attended Current Space events with live entertainment and have never found the volume to be extremely loud as stated in the complaints and violation. 
Our team consistently hears positive feedback from community members who visit Kern Space that their venue and the expanded garden bar is an enormous benefit to the neighborhood. Residents are drawn to the area because of Kern Space and similar creative entertainment venues that are transforming the neighborhood into a lively district. Property owners, such as WPM, Salco, Paverni Shake, specifically cite the vibrant Bromo Arts District neighborhood when attracting new residents and use language such as urban, eclectic, and convenient to describe the pro property location and note the proximity to live entertainment and retail in the heart of downtown. Developers with projects yet to come on the market invest in the neighborhood due to the growth of the creative community. Current Space's newest and future member neighbors count on the positive activity they have established through regular programming to entice customers, residents, and visitors to their own establishments. Current Space was one of the first committed establishments to open on the 400 block of Howard Street in 2010. They've helped to encourage the growth on their block, which now has multiple locally owned retail shops, newer creative art spaces, market rate apartments, and several new construction projects. The creative organizations, retailers, and businesses on this block have established strong partnerships with each other. The 400 block of Howard Street is a success story for all of Baltimore City. This is what we want all over the city, especially downtown and in an arts district. In support of current space, we request consistent procedures from the Liquor Board that do not penalize current space or other law-abiding law organizations each time a representative is dispatched to investigate a noise complaint. Clarification is needed for what constitutes extremely loud and high-volume music as stated in the viol violation if the volume is within the allowable range. The Bromo Arts District and Downtown Partnership of Baltimore strongly support current space and are grateful for their commitment to our downtown community. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, have anything else? No questions, no. Joe. Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Benvenito and Ms. Hamilton, um, on the basis of the materials containing the charging documents, the testimony received, I find a violation of Rule 3.12 General Welfare on August 27, 2022. Uh, listen, you all have made uh, great efforts to try to deal with the issue. I'm not sure we were fully aware of them. Um, you were cooperative with our people. You have no record of any violations. You obviously have the support of the local community. It sounds like you're trying to do good things. I don't think your noise volume at poetry readings is probably a problem. It sounds like the music is the issue. Uh, I'm going to ask you to work with our people to see if you can explain to them what you're doing there so they can see what you're doing there and they can have some better appreciation and maybe give you some tips about how to avoid uh, running afoul of us when the 311 calls come in. We can't control who calls in and complains. When we send people out um, and our inspectors find that the volume is too loud, we have to do something about it. On the basis of all that, um, I would impose a nominal fine of $100 because this is the one violation, give you 30 days to pay it, and hope that we have resolved this issue for going forward. Commissioners? Based upon the charging document, the testimony received, I too find a violation of Rule 3.12 General Welfare on August 27, 2022. I'll concur and echo all the comments made by the chairman and in, uh, concur with the imposition of a $100 fine. Yes, uh, based on materials and testimony provided today, I, I also agree with the chair's findings, a violation of Rule 312, general welfare uh, on August 27, 2022, and a fine of $100. Uh, Ms. Russell. I have exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Violation Report, Inspector Ted Hope. Um, Board Exhibit 2, Service Request um, Summary Report, dated 9-19-22. Um, exhibit number three, service request summary dated 9-19-22. Um, licensee exhibit one, sound meter reading. Two, sound mitigation plan. Three, sound meter reading. Four, 311 complaint. Five, communication. Six, 48 letters of support. And seven, citation slash award. And so get the inspector's name, have a conversation with her afterwards, and let's see if we can avoid further problems, okay? Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. The licensees uh, will receive instructions from this agency on how to um, pay the fine imposed by the board and any attendant fees that go along with it. Shall we move to the next matter, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Item number two on the violations docket. <clears throat> New Club Thunderbird Incorporated trading as Club Thunderbird. Premises are located at 2201 East Chase Street. Uh, holders of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Licensee is charged with six violations of the board's rules stemming from two separate dates of incidents, 
to it. Those are a violation of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-2004C4 on November 5th, 2022, violation of Board Rule 4.05 prohibited hours stemming from an incident on November the 5th, 2022. A violation of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-2004C4 stemming from an incident on November the 18th, 2022. Violation of Rule 4.05 prohibited hours from an incident on November the 18th, 2022. Violation of Board Rule 3.03C employee records stemming from an incident on November the 18th, 2022. And lastly, a violation of Rule 3.02 cooperation stemming from an incident on November the 18th, 2022. Um, Inspector Tudhope and Chief Inspector Chris Malis are testifying for the board. Um, Council? Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Priebus on behalf of Ron, Ronnie Player and the new Club Thunderbird LLC. Commissions or denials? Uh, your, your Honor. Mr. Chairman, may I request a brief postponement? I was just retained. I've represented Mr. Player for years and years and years, and uh, he, for some reason, was not made aware of our prior 45th District group of BD7s that had appealed this matter, and I would like an opportunity to get so, him um, in with the other folks. When, uh, when could we bring it back in? When will you be ready? So you're doing you're waiting for an appeal to be resolved? No, uh, the, the 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 case was affirmed on appeal to Maryland Appellate Court. Is that how we say it now? I'll never get I've that heard right. of it. I'm not sure which court. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in, 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 in one part of the argument that I had made had to do with uh, rational basis equal protection argument in which they said there was not enough record before the board. So I, I thought it would be prudent to bring a court action as opposed to try to make a record with statistics before the, the board. And I have promised Mr. Blendy that I would be doing that for the other folks. Uh, if, if you're not inclined to wait. Yeah, so when do, you, when do you want to bring this back is my question. I, 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 I would like as much time as I could get, but I understand the board's position. Mr. So. Blendy's view. Uh, sometime in February, one of the two February well, dockets. That's fine. Okay, case is continued. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No, go ahead. We have an issue with knowing who the op who's in operational control of this establishment. So if they're asking for a postponement, I would request that they don't operate till they come in front of the board. Well, who is running the oper this operation? Uh, you have to um, tell us who you are, sir. Who is Mr. Player? Th this is James Player. He's been the manager, part owner for. God. 22 years. 22 years. Uh, Ronnie Player is his brother, who's the actual licensee. And um, are you there every day? Yeah, I'm the owner. You're the owner, but Mr. Chris Amalis, you, you need to get with Mr. Chris Amalis, mm -hmm. and I will arrange that. Right. And we need to know that you are in full operational control. Right. And that he can call you on your cell phone any time, day or night, that there's, a, there's an issue with that. Did right. you agree to that? Yeah, I agree to it. And just for the record, I spoke with uh, the licensee, Ronnie, um, yesterday, and I told him that the board has requested his presence and he needs to be here, and he has not shown up again to another hearing, which he hasn't shown up to, I think, three previous violation hearings. It's going to be a problem, Mr. Previous, um, unless, you know, we get a different licensee. So I understand. Let's get this straight I when will, you come back. We'll get in operational uh, control of yeah. the licensees. Go ahead. Yeah. So w what is the gentleman's name? What is his... This is um, James, James Player, P-L-A-Y-E-R. Okay. Yeah, my question, Mr. Chair, to, to the attorney is, who, where is, and who is Mr. Darnell Lessony, who is the, uh, says here in the report, is the manager? So she, who's the manager? She's a manager. She's a manager. She, she, has, she has plans on purchasing, purchasing the establishment, it. but that has not, they haven't even come to my office for a contract yet. As, Mr. As President Truman would say, the buck stops with Mr. Player. And just for the record, again, I've, myself or none of my inspectors have ever seen this gentleman in operational control. Yeah, I think that's the issue, Mr. Chairman. I mean, you're granted postponement, but Mr. Priebus, Mr. Ronnie Player needs to actually show up and deal with these Understood. violations. Like I said, I just got contacted. Yep. And Understood. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. James Player, I'm going to hold you responsible. Uh, when they come back here, along with Mr. Ronnie Player, uh, and, if, and you need to work with our chief inspector, 
if you want to stay open. You understand that? Yes. Otherwise, we're going to close you down. Okay? Uh, and we'll have you back here in February to deal with these issues, okay? Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I make a request I, I, about calling? You're done. You could, I, I have a, um, a transfer hearing for um, 815 North Charles Street. Ms. Young Yim is here, and her mom is in critical condition, and she's. Which number is it? Uh, 815, 17. No, I mean, what number does our doctor? What's the address? What's the address, Mr. Previs? Mount Vernon Liquors, 815. Oh. It would be item number uh, 815. North Charles Street, right? It's number 10 on the regular items, Mr. Chairman. Let's see if I've got that. Okay, that's the Mount Vernon liquor? Yes, sir. All right, let's call that case, Mr. Thank Blair. you very much. Then um, Mr. Mr. item number two on the violations docket has been continued to a future meeting of the board per order of the chair. Shall I call that item then, Mr. Chairman? That you, Are you okay with that? We're good, yeah. Okay, yes, please. Right. Moving, moving out of order, calling item number 10 on the regular docket, CNY Enterprise LLC, trading as Mount Vernon Liquor, Premises are located at 815 to 17 North Charles Street. This is a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license and an application to transfer ownership. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Previs on behalf of the applicant, Ms. Young Yim, who is to my immediate right. Her husband, Chang Yim, is to my far right. And the, the resident, city resident non-owner uh, applicant is Mr. Kyle Skinner. Okay, you want to proffer? Yes, thank you. Uh, th this is a, an application for transfer of ownership but not location of Mount Vernon Liquors located at 815-817 North Charles Street. It, it is a liquor store and, um, and, and retail store operation. This is a Class A license. It's not a Class BD7. Um, Ms. The, the Yims have been the owners of Linden Bar and Liquors on North Avenue for many, many years. Their property was um, the subject of eminent domain for the Amtrak um, tunnel project and will be a, a work yard for that. So they, they've already been um, moved and Linden is now closed. Uh, in light of that, they have purchased this operation. The Linden license is in Mr. Mr. Yim's name and the currently the, the, uh, the Mount Vernon liquors license will be in Ms. Yim's name. They have many, many, many years of experience in the uh, selling alcohol beverage. Ms. Yim is alcohol awareness certified. Uh, they are hands-on owners. They are there, at least one of them, the entire time that the premises is open. Um, currently, the hours of operation are anticipated to be uh, 10 a.m. to midnight, uh, seven days a week. Um, the purchase price for the operation with $700,000 with a $500,000 note and they have communicated with the Mount Vernon Belvedere Community Improvement Association and have entered into a memorandum of understanding I believe a copy of which was forwarded to the board I have a copy that's been signed by the YIMS but not by the board and I can supply that now or I can bring up it, 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 it came late uh, so the board probably has not seen that yet okay. Mr. Chairman but they're willing to have the terms of the MOU be part of their license? They are, and we request that it be incorporated. Okay. Commissioners, have any questions? No questions. No questions. All right. Anything further? Nothing further. All right. Thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, the proffer from counsel, and the memorandum of understanding, which has been received in evidence uh, and which will be made a part of the license so that its terms are applicable uh, to the extent they're enforceable by law. I vote to approve this application to transfer ownership of this Class A beer, wine, and liquor license. Commissioner? Based upon the application, the proffer, uh, I too would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership with the memorandum of understanding attached to the license to the, to the extent it's enforceable by law. Yes, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also approved the application to transfer ownership along with the MOU incorporated with the license. Thank you very Ms. much. Ms. Russell? I close it to the record. What is it, one MOU? Okay, thank you. Good thank luck, you. folks. That concludes this matter before the board. Um, applicants will receive instructions on, from this agency on how to legally complete the transfer of ownership that the board preliminarily approved today, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. Shall we move back in order, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Moving back to the violations docket. Item number three on the violations docket. 
Lalji Incorporated trading as Wilkins Tavern, 2696 Wilkins Avenue. This is a class D beer, wine, and liquor license charged with one violation of the, war, the board's rules. That is a violation of rule 4.05 prohibited hour stemming from an incident on September the 18th, 2022. Um, Inspector Tudhope is testifying for the board. Admission or denial, Mr. Hurdle? Uh, we're gonna make an admission, absolutely. Okay. Do you want to explain? Absolutely. Uh, with me is Jotry Singh, the named licensee. Um, we don't have all the mitigation paperwork that the previous licensees that were up here had. This is a situation where <clears throat> Miss Singh's husband was supposed to file for special Sundays, and between when they were filled out and when they didn't get to the liquor board, this inspection occurred, is my understanding. This is a convenience store, and they are allowed to be open on Sundays. I'm not sure that's been clarified in the license. It's something we're looking into in terms of the non-sale of alcohol, as well as making sure that in the future she mitigates any issues with her husband and his inability to file the special Sunday permits, which we're working on. I'm not think getting that, involved between her and her husband, you <laughs> understand. Uh, I'm not, we're, not, we're not getting in the middle of it, absolutely not. So we would ask simply that the board um, give them a, min a de minimis fine in this situation. This is something that they're aware of the issue. I believe they closed at that time. They haven't been open on Sunday since then. And certainly our goal was to clarify um, with the staff at the board how we're able to open on Sundays without the alcohol sales. I know that Eddie's in Mount Vernon does, et cetera, um, and to better work on our process to get the Sunday license requests in. Okay, um, Inspector, were they cooperative with you? <coughs> yes, sir. Okay, no problems with them? No, sir. All right, commissioners, have any questions? No questions. No questions. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hurdle. On the face of the materials containing the charging documents and the uh, including the, uh, the proffer from counsel, including the admission of the violation. I find the violation of Rule 4.05 prohibitive hours, prohibited hours on September 18, 2022. Um, and in light of what's been said, I'd impose a $200 fine and give them 30 days to pay. Based upon the charging document, the proffer, the admission, I too find a violation of Rule 4.05 prohibited hours on September 18, 2022 and concur with the imposition of a $200 fine. Yes, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also agree with the chair's findings of violation of rule 4.05 prohibited hours on September 18th, 2022, and the fine of $200. Thank Russell. you, commissioners. Mike Elizabeth, for the record, board is number one, violation report, Inspector Todd Hope. Thank you, good luck. That concludes this matter before the board. Uh, council has received instructions on how to pay the fine imposed by the board today, as well as any attendant fees that go along with that. That concludes the violations docket. Mr. Chairman, should we move forward? Please. Moving on to the regular items. Item number one, Mandali Incorporated trading as Mount Everest. Premises, proposed premises are located at 600 East Pratt Street, Suite 105. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-1604C2 double I, requiring $700,000 in capital investment in restaurant fixtures and facilities, 65% food sales, and a, a seating capacity for a minimum of 150 people, applicants requesting off-premises catering and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Council. Abraham Hernald of Bundali Inc. Trading as Mount Everest. Uh, with me is Mr. Amor uh, Chantel, who is the licensee. Mr. Chantel has 23 years of experience. Um, he has alcohol awareness certi certification. I'm certainly happy to pass that forward. <clears throat> we also have some wine lists that will be likely, or drink lists, I guess, proposed at the restaurant. Um, my understanding from our appraisal is that the investment that is already there and will be made will be in excess of $900,000. And I believe they have 152 seats based on the floor plan I most recently saw. And I do have a copy of that valuation if it didn't make it into the record. Do we have it, Ms. Russell? If not, it'll be received. We don't. And yeah. just to be clear, this is a 600 East Pratt Suite 105. Suite 105 is actually kind of on the side road off the front. So you're not going to get Pratt Street frontage. I think it used to be a chicken wing location. It's next to the garage entrance on the side. Okay. And... Um, Who's going to be handling alcohol? Uh, the staff will be handling alcohol. All staff members handling alcohol will be alcohol awareness certified. They haven't started hiring yet. There's extensive build out. There's the whole process that we're looking to get moving. Okay. Commissioners? No questions. No questions. All right. Thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, uh, proper from council, having met 
the criteria for investment and uh, seating. I uh, vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with off-premises catering and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Commissioner. Based upon the application, the proffer from Council, I too would approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with off-premise catering and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Yes, based on the testimony materials provided today, I'd also vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license and the request for off-premise catering and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Ms. Russell. I'd close it for the record. Exhibit number one, alcohol burner certification. Number two, wine list. And three, capital investment. Thank you. Good luck, sir. That concludes this matter before the board. Council has received instructions from this agency on how to legally obtain the new Class B license that was approved by the board today. Moving forward, Mr. Chair. Yes. Item number two on the regular items, the Garden Rooftop LLC trading as the Garden. Proposed premises are located at 411 North Paca Street. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor li restaurant license under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-1603C1 double uh, I, requiring $200,000 in capital investment in restaurant fixtures and facilities and, and a seating capacity for a minimum of 75 people. Applicants requesting live entertainment and off-premises catering. Again, Mr. Hurdle. Abraham Hurdle on behalf of the Garden Rooftop LLC trading as the Garden at 411 North Paca Street. With me is the named prospective licensee, if I may proffer. You may. I have a appraisal from John Melnick Auctioneers. Uh, this is a situation where the client did things a little in a way that I prefer they don't, and that is that they basically built it before we got a license. And having been there, I can say that the appraisal of $2.3 million in capital expenditure seems about accurate. The place is absolutely stunning. Gorgeous location, two stories, uh, roof deck, uh, just a stunning build out. Um, my understanding is they have 120 seats. It might be closer to 135. We're trying to finalize the seating. Um, they have a beautiful kitchen where they're going to focus on food. Their plan is to be open from roughly 11 a.m. to 4 and then from 6 to midnight most days. Um, but there's no MOU. No one's contacted them about an MOU. In the event that they are contacted, they will explore what that would be. Um, he is an experienced operator. He's been working with his brother for nine years in the business. He is alcohol awareness certified. All staff handling alcohol will also be alcohol awareness certified. Is near the Lexington Market? No, this is up the street some ways. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was just trying to for a hundred block of North Packer Street. So. I get confused over there myself all the time because my doctor's office, I think, is a block away around the corner. Um, but yeah, this, this place is absolutely stunning. I really can't stress enough. Beautiful build out. Okay. Uh, and who's going to handle alcohol? Uh, well, variety of staff, whether it's going to be waitresses, bartenders, everyone's going to be alcohol awareness certified in that regard. Once they hire the full staff, they will have, uh, I think Mr. Filipitas come out and do a whole staff training and then continue that as new staff arrives. Okay. Commissioners have questions? No questions. No questions. All right. Thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, proper from council and having met the um, investment and seating criteria, I vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with live entertainment and off-premises catering. Commissioners? Based upon the application, the proffer, uh, and meeting the investment and seating requirements, I too would vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with, life, with live entertainment and off-premise catering. Yes, Thank based, you. Oops, sorry. My apologies. Yes. Based on the testimony materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license and the request for live entertainment and off-premise catering. Ms. Russell? No, for the record. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck, sir. That concludes this matter before the board. A applicant will receive follow-up instructions from this agency on how to legally obtain the new Class B restaurant license that the board approved today. Uh, shall we move forward? Yes. Then item number three on the docket, September Trees LLC trading as Rise and Rest Cafe. Proposed premises are located at 3100 East Baltimore Street. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-903C2, little i, request requiring $500,000 in capital investment in restaurant fixtures and facilities, 51% food sales, and a seating capacity for a minimum of 75, but not more than 150 individuals. Good morning, Mr. Morning. Chairman, Commissioners. Good morning. Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of the applicant. 
you want to proffer for us? I do, Your Honor. Um, I'm happy to be standing by Mr. Matthews today. He has uh, an extensive culinary resume uh, working more currently at the Underground Food Court in Washington, D.C., previously serving uh, with uh, Chef Michael Mina and the Mina Restaurant Group, which won a Michelin star in Washington, Adas on the River as a chef, uh, executive chef in Alexandria, Virginia, St. Anselm's in Washington, which also possesses a Michelin star. Prior to that, he worked at Mina Mina's Project, Wit and Wisdom at the Four Seasons Hotel here in Baltimore, and many, many, many other concepts going back 15 years. Um, Rise and Rest Cafe is the project. It will be a, a place that will serve three meals a day. Um, they've got the menu for both. They've got a different menu, obviously. He's received extensive support in the neighborhood, as you see evidenced in the file from uh, neighbors, from the Friends of Patterson Park uh, and other groups. It's gonna have 85 uh, seats. And at this time, we have no outdoor tables and no live entertainment. What's the investment? Uh, the investment, I think, uh, counted up to about $523,000. Let me pull that out. He's broken it down between fixtures and work that needs to be done. 229 or 221 on the fixtures alone and 301 on the um, work, including drywall, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You should have both of those executive summaries in your right. evidence. Commissioners have questions? No question. No question. Uh, anything further, Mr. Fogelman? No, thank you very much, other than the obvious that he is already alcohol management certified due to all of his work in the industry, and his employees will also be as well. Okay. On the basis, then, of the materials contained in the application, the exhibits received, the proffer from counsel, um, I would vote to approve this application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license. Commissioners? On the application, the proffer, and the uh, meeting the investment and seating requirements, I, too, would approve this new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license. Yes, uh, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license. Ms. Russell? Thank you. Thank you. For the record, Board Exhibit Number 1, Business Plan. Thank you. Good luck, sir. That concludes this matter before the Board. Council has received instructions on how to legally obtain the new Class B restaurant license that the Board approved today. Uh, shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Please. Item number four on the regular items, Baltimore Improv Group Incorporated, trading as Baltimore Improv Group Theater. Proposed premises are located at 1727 North Charles Street. This is an application for a new Class C beer, wine, and liquor club license under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-1603C5, allowing the board to issue a Class C beer, wine, and liquor license to a club in the area bounded by Charles Street on the west, East Lafayette Street on the north, North Lovegrove Street on the east, and East Landvale Street on the south in the 45th Alcoholic Beverages District. Applicants also requesting live entertainment. Council. Thank you. Stephen W. Fogelman uh, on behalf of Baltimore Improv Group Incorporated. You want to proffer? Yes, thank you very much. Um, this is an exciting project. This is a great group. Uh, really Baltimore's uh, premier comedy troupe um, found their own home years ago, then moved into a, a better home, have a great landlord, and they pulled a lot of one-day licenses over the years. Um, the sale of beer has supported the troupe uh, through the years, uh, but they would love to have a liquor license and so they went to their senator the law was changed 12 1603 to permit such a license uh, for their for their benefit and uh, they are will be alcohol management certified the board of directors is going to manage the show there so to speak um, michelle faulkner forston is uh, the primary licensee she's also the executive director the moment you're right here yes yes and Mich and jessica hankin to her right um, is also uh, city resident and is a city resident and is also very very active in the organization the Yeah, a member of the board of directors. I have a note that there's an MOU with the Charles North Community Association Yes, pursuant to the statute an MOU was required and it has been entered into do you have that in your evidence? Mm -hmm. we have that, Ms. Sure. Russell? It's no. a couple of years old. That's what happened. Have the pandemic it's in my notes. <laughs> We have it. We do. Uh, okay, and it, the, the terms will be a part of the app. The Absolutely. Life. They'll be Absolutely okay. right. Um, anything further? No, thank you. Commissioners? 
No questions. Are they going to tell us a joke? <laughs> we do improv. <laughs> <laughs> you've, had, you've had plenty of material this morning. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll store it now. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, on the basis of the materials contained in the application, uh, proffer from counsel, testimony received. <laughs> Uh, the memorandum of understanding between the applicants and the Charles North Community Association, in terms of which will be applied to the license to the extent they're enforceable by law. I vote to approve the application for a new Class C beer, wine, and liquor club license with live entertainment. Commissioners? Based upon the application, the proffer, I too would approve uh, the application for a new Class C beer, wine, and liquor license with live entertainment uh, with the memorandum of understanding attached to the license to the extent it's uh, enforceable by law. <laughs> yes, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application for a new Class C beer, wine, and liquor cup license with the MOU Incorporated and also the request for live entertainment. Ms. Russell? No, if it's for the record. That, Thank you. Good luck, ladies. That concludes this matter before the board. Uh, councils received instructions on how to legally obtain the license that the board preliminarily approved today. Uh, no, shall we move forward, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Item number five on the regular docket, GT so Storm LLC trading as the Green Turtle. This is uh, proposed premises are 3803 Boston Street. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-1604C2 little i. Um, the board may issue an additional Class B beer, wine, and liquor license holder to a current Class B beer, wine, and liquor license holder if the new establishment has a minimum capital investment of $700,000 for restaurant facilities, which may not include the cost of land or buildings, 65% of food sales, and a minim minimum seating capacity of 150 individuals. Should it be necessary, pursuant to Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-1609E, the board may waive the capital investment requirement and minimum seating capacity requirements if the board holds a public hearing and reviews the business practice of the license applicant and determines the license holder is in good standing and has a reputable business practice. This applicant is also requesting live entertainment and outdoor table service, and the board will note, should it be necessary, the business practice is in your materials. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, David F. Mister, Mr. Winner of Bartlett LLC, representing the applicant. Um, if they may proffer on behalf of the applicant. Um, Mr. Curley uh, already holds two Class B licenses in Baltimore City, one for Region Ale, the other for Green Turtle McHenry Row, which the board approved earlier this year. So if the board approves this, this would be his third. He also is a, a Class B license holder in Howard County for his Region Ale concept. Um, as noted, obviously, this is a, a license which requires the minimum capital investment and seating. Um, in the board's file should have a copy of the pro forma as well as the um, as well as the uh, floor plan, which indicates that where are the rest of my papers here? Um, there will be 160 seats. I'll have some, one for you, Mr. Eisinger. Hold on for a moment. Um, and Thank you. there's going to be a capital investment, and I have additional copies for you, Ms. Russell, if you need yes, them. I do. Thank um, you. There will be an additional capital investment of $1,340,000. That's in addition to existing capital that is at the premises. This was previously an on the border uh, restaurant in Canton Crossing. So the million three forty is in addition to what's already there. We didn't even have that appraised because we were going to have such a large capital investment made. Um, as I indicated, there's 160 seats. The um, all of the green turtles by practice have all of their servers certified in a controller approved alcohol awareness program. Um, Mr. Curley will also have registered with the board various managers and shift managers, general managers, because he does have a number of responsibilities. The uh, usual and customary average sales for green turtles is 70% food to 30% alcohol, and we anticipate that it would continue to be the same here. And we do know that obviously on an annualized basis, we're gonna have to have it certified to the board. And we're happy to answer any questions that the board may have of Mr. Curley. 
Thank you. Commissioners? None. No question. Okay. All right, thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, the exhibits which been, will be received in evidence and the proffer from Council, I vote to approve this application for a new Class B <coughs> beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with live entertainment and outdoor table service. Commissioners? So I find uh, that Mr. Curley has a reputable business practice based upon his current existing licenses and having zero uh, history of violations and being found in compliance. And for those reasons and for reasons set forth in the application of the proffer, I too would approve the new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with live entertainment and outdoor table service. Yes, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor re restaurant license, and also the request for live entertainment and outdoor table service. Yeah, I assumed that you had met the uh, investment in yeah. person requirements, so I didn't make the finding about reputable business, but I join in the commissioner's finding on that. <laughs> Thank we appreciate even that the vote of confidence. Yes. <laughs> okay. Co Ms. My Russell. Co yes. My close exhibits for the record. What is it? One floor plan. What is it? Two capital investment. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Members of the board. That concludes this matter before the board council's received instructions from this agency on how to legally obtain the new license that was approved by the board today. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, item number six on the docket is the one that council had requested. Um, a post a brief postponement to be moved to the end. I don't know if the board wishes to move out of order or not. Pass on that for a moment. Okay. And moving on to item number seven on today's docket. <coughs> Excuse me. All TRD LLC trading as Vision House. Premises are located at 134 to 36 West 25th Street. This is an application to transfer ownership a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license from a contract purchaser and requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. Abraham Hurdle on behalf of all TRD LLC. <clears throat> With me is the proposed licensee, Andrew Gaddis, as well as, well, this is their proposed operator. I'm sorry. Mr. Gaddis is on my left. Oh, okay. I used to look on the left on this. Um, <laughs> this has been a long time coming. This uh, Vision House slash all TRD LLC was previously granted a transfer about three years ago and through any number of different issues. Um, we are back here today to reaffirm, I guess, redo the transfer. Um, this is a BD7 license. Um, their operator has, my understanding, is about nine years of experience. He runs various locations in Give New a York. Name. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Matthew Creedon. Like, how do you spell that? T R E E D O N. I, I have to ask that for our reporter because he's taking all this down. Thank you. And he is food certified in New York. He will be alcohol awareness certified here before operating in any capacity. In addition, he did mention to me that he is an attorney, if that brought any extra credibility. And I said, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, no. Uh, but <laughs> that, that is something that he wanted me to mention. And I always want to keep my clients happy. Watch this situation. on live TV, too, right, to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, they, I believe they have talked to the community and they have various support. Again, we've been here a couple of times. I think we had a hardship hearing with Mr. Weeks a few weeks ago. Mr. Weeks actually has COVID right now, um, so he couldn't be here today. Mr. Kelly Cross has testified on their behalf, I think, at one point or another. Um, they're looking forward to operating a well-run establishment and would look and ask the board to approve that transfer. And everyone's going to be um, certified? All ha people who handle alcohol will be alcohol or certified, absolutely. Okay. The commissioners have any questions? None. No questions. Okay, there's no yes. record of violations to this establishment, so I think we're good. All right, on the basis of the materials contained in the application, the proffer from council, any testimony received, um, and any prior hearings that we've had on this, I vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of this BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the application and the proffer, I too would approve this application to transfer ownership with the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Yes, based on the testimony and materials for today, I also vote to approve the application for transfer ownership and also the request of delivery of alcoholic beverages. Thank you very much. No, is it for the record? That concludes this matter before the board. Uh, applicants have received instructions on how to legally complete the transfer, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As, as you walk out the door. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Item number eight on today's regular docket, Bibbs Enterprise Incorporate, Incorporated, uh, trading as Ace Liquor and Grocery. Premises are located at 500 Maud Avenue. This is an application to transfer ownership of a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license. 
Good morning. I'm Bruce Kurlander on behalf of Navneet Kaur. Uh, uh, um, she's applying it, uh, for the transfer of a license, a six day beer, wine, and liquor license at the premises located at 500 Maud Avenue in Baltimore, Maryland. It uh, does business as Ace Liquors and Groceries. Uh, if I may proffer. Please. Um, um, Ms. Kaur is purchasing 100% of the stock in Bibbs Enterprise, Inc., uh, which owns the business. So she will be the sole stockholder. She will also be the sole uh, officer of the company. Um, sh she lives just above the store um, uh, on the second floor of 500 Maud Avenue. She has for three years. She's also um, registered to vote in Baltimore City. So she can act as the resident agent and she is the licensee. Um, Ms. Kaur has uh, worked at this business uh, for three years. She's one of two employees and uh, she's alcohol awareness certified. Um, so, um, and during that time, there have been no violations. Um, she has uh, basically run the register and uh, uh, purchased inventory and that sort of thing. She's very familiar with the business and uh, she's purchasing the business from the owner uh, with SBA financing. Is she gonna be the only one handling alcohol? Uh, yes, if anybody else um, does handle alcohol, they will also be alcohol certified, training uh, alcohol awareness certified. Okay. Um, but as of now, yes, she will be the only one who will be uh, handling alcohol. And uh, obviously, she can be there pretty much all the time. It's not, very, it's not a very far commute from the second floor to the first floor. Um, and, uh, um, in connect and well, uh, are there any questions? Uh, Commissioners? Yes, yeah, uh, 500 Maud Avenue. This is in Brooklyn, across from the firehouse? Brooklyn area, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. No question. All right, uh, no, anything further? Uh, Nothing further. All right, thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, the proffer from counsel, and any testimony received, I vote to approve this application to transfer this Class A beer, wine, and liquor license. Based upon the application, the proffer, I would vote to approve this application to transfer ownership. Yes, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of an A beer, wine, and liquor license. Ms. Russell? No, is it for the record? All right, thank you. Good luck, Ms. Carr. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. That council and applicant have received instructions from this, this agency on how to legally obtain the license transfer that was preliminarily approved by the board today, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Yes. Item number nine on the regular docket, Mikomalito Restaurant LLC, trading as Mikomalito. Premises are located at 2101 North Charles Street. This is an application to transfer ownership of a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Abraham Hurdle, on behalf of Miko Molito Restaurant, LLC, trading as Miko Molito. With me is Mr. Santano. Ms. Deardorff could not be here today for a number of reasons. She is the city resident licensee, if I may. Please. This location is another location where I believe an application was put in sometime in late 19. Unfortunately, for a number of reasons, the transfer was not completed due to COVID and any other number of issues. We are also working to transfer to make sure we remove one of the other licensees who's coming off the license. The operations of the business will continue functioning exactly as they currently are at the moment. Um, there will be no operational changes. Mr. Santano, who was there every day today, will continue to be there every day going forward. Um, I believe they have the opportunity to be open from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. I think their hours are significantly more limited. And I do believe Mr. Santano, in his confidence in the business, recently purchased the building as well. Um, it is a restaurant. It operates as a restaurant. They do significant delivery as well as on-premises, food and uh, alcohol sales. All people who will handle alcohol will be alcohol awareness certified. Yeah, they had a violation in 2020 <coughs> for a sale of minor, so they need to be alert to that. Okay. Um, commissioners, have any questions? None. No questions. <coughs> Anything further, Mr. Hurdle? No, okay. not at this time. All right, on the basis of the materials contained in the application, the proffer from council, uh, I vote to approve this application to transfer this Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Based upon the application and the proffer, I would vote to approve this application to transfer ownership. Yes, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve 
the application of transfer ownership of a B beer, wine, and liquor license. Ms. Russell? No, it's just for the record. Thank you, Good luck, sir. That concludes this matter before the board. Council has received instructions from this agency on how to legally complete the transfer that has been preliminarily approved by the board today, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. Shall I move forward, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Item number 10 has already been heard by the board when the board moved out of order. Item number 11 uh, on the docket has been postponed and will be heard at a future hearing date of the board. Bringing us to item number 12 on the regular items, our Sunday Gravy LLC, trading as Cafe Compli. Um, premises are located at 4801 Harford Road, Suite S2. This is an application to transfer ownership of a Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Good morning. For the record, Melvin J. Kanesky representing the applicant in this case. This is an application to transfer existing BD7 uh, beer, wine, and liquor license. Uh, the current ap applicant in this case has um, experience having been in the restaurant business in various uh, locations. It's familiar with the rules and regulations of the liquor board. I uh, will have the alcohol awareness um, certification. We'll make sure that anyone that uh, is uh, dispensing alcohol uh, will be alcohol certified uh, pursuant to that. Um, and I think there should be, uh, if you, oh, there we go. As we speak, you get a letter from the um, Walterson Improvement uh, Association who have met with the um, current applicant. Uh, they're uh, pleased with their operation and uh, as indicated, uh, they are confident that they'll bring added value to the uh, neighborhood uh, that um, and the current um, applicant has been there probably for the last four or five months operating the place. So uh, there shouldn't be any problem with this uh, uh, transition. I have to state for the record that before Christmas I had lunch there. It was one of the best uh, pastas I've ever had uh, and I brought some of your uh, Abrutse's pasta to my sister who lived in Pescara for many years and she approved. So uh, <laughs> I recommend this place for anybody who likes uh, uh, Italian food. A Michelin one or two or five <laughs> star. Um, Maybe a tire place. Do the commissioners have any questions? <laughs> right. No questions. <laughs> any questions? No questions. No. All right. Thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, the profit from council, as well as the letter from the Walterson Improvement Association in support, I vote to approve the application to transfer this BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Based upon the application, the proffer, and the letter of support from the Walterson Improvement Association, I too would approve this application to transfer ownership. Yes, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Ms. Russell. I close it for the record. Exhibit number one, letter of support from Walterson Improvement Associated, dated 12-5-22. Good luck, Mr. Mancarelli. Got an interesting second name, Xavier. You don't see that very often. That, that concludes this matter before the board. Um, applicant and council have received instructions from this agency on how to legally complete the transfer of ownership, which the board preliminarily approved today, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Yes. Item number 13 on the regular docket, CLB 2101 LLC trading as Docks LNP Liquors. Premises are located at 2101 West Lexington, Lexington Street. This is an application to transfer ownership requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages of a Class A2 beer, wine, and liquor license. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good morning. Jay, you representing the applicant, <coughs> Mr. Protesi Sengayimana. Sengayimana. Good work. <laughs> yes. Um, this is a request for a uh, transfer of a Class A2 uh, beer, wine, and liquor license with a request for delivery. Uh, Mr. Protesi um, will be the, the applicant and the licensee. Um, he's going in the business with um, a, uh, another member. Uh, she's not going to be on the license because she lost her green card and she couldn't get fingerprinted in time. She did apply for the renewed um, green card. It takes about eight months. So for now, we're asking that Mr. Protesi be the sole licensee until she um, gets her green card. Um, she, Mr. Protesi will get his fingerprint, uh, I mean, the alcohol awareness certification um, once the board approves. Uh, and also, he will contact the community to make sure that he works with the community. I did try to um, locate the community association, but I wasn't successful. I did also contact the settler to see if he knows any community association, but he was not. 
So we'll continue to look for the community association in the area and I'll work with the community since this is a corner store and uh, I think it'll be a good idea to have a good relationship with the community. Um, there, I'm sure the commissioners have looked at the application. There is a, a of a concern that he did have a DUI prior. Um, but since then, uh, since the second DUI that he had, he did work on his problem and he acknowledges the problem and that there might be a concern that he's going to legal business now. But he, after the second year, which was in 2018, he, he put himself through a commercial driving school and he's a commercial license holder. So he's also working as a commercial truck driver and uh, this will be a, another uh, business venture that he's going into. So he, he has improved his life and he's moving on and, and he's trying to become a business owner now. So uh, we request that um, your honor, take that into consideration in making the decision. Will he be the only one handling alcohol at this place? Oh, um, his partner will be also working at the store. She's certified and uh, she's, uh, uh, she has experience in liquor business. And Mr. Protasi also has some experience uh, working in a liquor store as a cashier. So he's familiar with the rules. Okay, commissioners have questions? Two questions. No. Okay. All right, uh, thank you. They said the materials contained in the application and the proffer from council. Um, I would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of this class A2 beer, wine, and liquor license with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based on the application, the proffer, I too would approve this application to transfer ownership with the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Yes, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application to transfer, to transfer ownership and request for delivery of alcoholic beverages. Thank you. Russell? No, is it for the record? Thank you. Good luck, sir. That concludes this matter before the board. Council has received instructions on how to legally complete the transfer of ownership that the board has preliminarily approved today, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Item number four on today's docket has been postponed and will be heard at a future date of the board. Moving to item number 15 of the regular docket, the Crazy Crab Bag LLC trading as the Crazy Crab Bag. Premises are located at 1739 to 41 Light Street. This is an application to transfer ownership of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license from a contract purchaser with continuation of outdoor table service. Applicant is requesting off-premises catering and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Good morning, Your Honor. Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of the applicant, Latoya Jones. Morning. Proper? I'd be happy to. Um, um, another concept uh, looking forward to South Baltimore Crazy Crab Bag. Um, Crazy Crab Bag, the licensee here is Latoya Jones. Miss Jones has extensive uh, alcohol management experience. Her family, her husband uh, runs a, uh, a licensed establishment called Bertha Soul Food Kitchen here in the city. Um, both her and Miss Erica Ash to her right will be on premises uh, to. 40 hours a week, they anticipate about 70 to 80% food sales to alcohol. Looking for a continuation of outdoor table service, delivery of alcohol, and off-premises catering. This is the former, former Verde Pizza location uh, on Light Street. It's already fit out as a restaurant for 85 seats. And we're pretty excited about that. Miss Ash um, has some experiences in DC uh, and a food truck originally and wants to bring um, this seafood restaurant here to the residents of Charm City. She very recently moved to uh, Baltimore City herself. She resides in Canton, Brewers Hill, depending on how you look at it. And um, she looks forward to being a part of the South and Southeast Baltimore community. Uh, she has, uh, they will be management, alcohol management certified as will their servers. Okay, commissioners? No. No question. All right, thank you. On the basis of the materials containing the application, the proffer from council, um, I vote to approve the application to transfer this BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license with outdoor table service, off-premises catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the application, the proffer, I too would approve this application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service, off-premise catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Yes, based on the testimony and materials provided today, I also vote to approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service and the request of off-premise catering and delivery of alcoholic beverages. There was a sale to minor a few years ago, so you gotta be very careful about that. Ms. Russell? Oh, is it for the record? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. That concludes this matter before the board. Um, council and applicants have received follow-up instructions from this agency on how to legally complete the transfer of ownership, which by law must occur within 180 days of the board's approval, which is today. Um, shall we move forward, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Then item number 16 on the regular docket is Inkworks Incorporated trading as Copper Mine. Uh, Premises are located at 5736 Falls Road. This is an amended application to transfer ownership of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license, and applicant is requesting alcoholic beverages delivery. Morning. Thank you. Stephen W. Fogelman, on behalf of the applicant, I'll be happy to proffer. Go ahead. This is an amended application. We're moving uh, Mr. Larkin, who has another opportunity in the licensed uh, field, and um, adding Ms. Gochar. Ms. Gochar is currently the Copper Mine Operations Director and sir, or, uh, Director of operations marketing and uh, has uh, been with Copper Mine since 2016. This is Copper Mine Cafe, 5736 Falls Road, former uh, curb shop. And this is the continuation in that same location, a BD7 tavern with food. There will be an adult uh, lifestyle um, athletic facility across the street that will complement well with the um, installation of a branded cafe. So they're excited about this. They're excited about, you know, Copper Mines acquisitions in the area and look forward to providing uh, customer service both to adults after workouts, after games, and uh, for celebrations possibly with uh, youth after games. So it'll be a, a nice- Not alcohol with youth. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. They have a, they, they have their, they're very much expanded their adult lifestyle brands over the last few years because I know several people whose children uh, benefited from Copper Mines programs, both down in Canton at New Burns Arena and uptown. It's a, it's a really neat company. There's another one out in Falls right in the county, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So yeah, they, they have quite a footprint, I believe, down in Howard County as well. Yeah. Okay. S and growing. Thank you. Commissioners have questions? No. No questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fogelman. On the base of the materials contained in the application, proffer from council. Uh, I vote to approve the amended application to transfer this BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the application and the proffer, I too would approve this amended application to transfer ownership with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Yes, based on the testimony and materials and the letter from the attorney, I also vote to approve the amended application to transfer ownership and also the request for delivery of alcoholic beverages. Thank Ms. you. Russell? No, it's for the record. Good luck. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Uh, council and applicant have received instructions from this agency on how to legally complete this transfer that the board preliminarily approved today, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. And Mr. Chairman, my understanding is all attorneys who requested uh, we wait are all present for to move back if the board wishes to move we back. We have hardship cases left. We, we do, whichever order Let's of the board. Run through those quickly. Yes, sir. Then moving on to the transfer hardship requests on the docket. Item number 17, Slim's Liquor Hub, LLC, trading as Slim's Liquor Hub. Premises are located at 4200 Blair Road. This is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license and a request for a transfer hardship extension of 90 days under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-1705B. For the record, Melvin J. Kodansky representing the uh, applicant licensee. Uh, this is a request. There was some confusion with the um, uh, use and occupancy as to the part of a building was pizza there, but we've got that straightened out. I think we're going to get the UNO very shortly. All the taxes have been paid, but in abundance of caution, we request a 90-day extension to finish it up. Okay. Commissioners? No. No question. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Kodensky. On the basis of the letter you submitted on December 1, as well as your proffer this morning, I vote to approve a 90-day transfer hardship extension for this license. Based upon uh, your the proffer and the letter of December 1st, 2022, I too would approve a transfer hardship extension of 90 days. Yes, based on the testimony and materials and the letter sent from the attorney, I vote to approve the request for transfer hardship extension of 90 days. Thank you, Ms. Russell. No, it is. That concludes this matter before the board. Shall we move forward? Please. Item number 18 on the regular items, Shristi LLC trading as Ambassador Dining Room. Premises are located at 3811 Canterbury Road. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license and a request for a 90-day transfer hardship extension under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-1705B. For the record, Melba Jake and representing the uh, applicant in this case, this was an issue 
uh, when we were having some problems with the controller's office. Apparently the controller's office is having a lot of problems where they lost a lot of records. However, we're down to the point now where I think we've got it um, pretty much solved and uh, within the next uh, 30 or 40 days, um, that'll all be taken care of. Um, Mr. Gopal's been there in the meantime operating the place. Um, we request the 90 days just as an abundance of caution. He's my neighbor. Um, so you're going to transfer it to someone else? Are you? No, no. He's he is the applicant. Right oh. now. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Commissioners, have any questions? No. No questions. All right. Thank you. On the uh, basis of your letter of December 7, Mr. Kaneski, in your file for this morning, vote to approve a 90-day transfer hardship extension for this license. Based upon the proffer in the December 7, 2022 letter, I too would grant the 90-day uh, transfer hardship extension. Based on testimony, materials, and the letter from the attorney, I also vote to approve the request for transfer of hearts of extension of 90 days. Ms. Russell? No, if it's for the record. Thank you. I have number 21. It's my last one. Go ahead. That concludes this matter before the board, then calling out of order per the chair's instructions. Item number 21 on today's regular items, Luigi LLC trading as Game On. Premises are located at 902 South Charles Street. Holders of a Class BD7, I'm sorry, a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. This is a request for a 90-day transfer hardship extension under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-1705B. For the record, Melvin J. Kaninska representing the applicant and the proposed licensee here. This is an issue, again, with the controller's office that we're straightening out with the prior uh, licensee and the landlord. Uh, we anticipate that um, within the next the 30 or 40 days, we should have that down to the point where we can uh, conclude that. Uh, otherwise, they've been uh, in there operating the place without uh, any um, type of problems, and uh, they asked for that extension. Is Ms. Learman aware of all these problems with sales tax? <laughs> I would think that when she starts seeing that, she may have t second thoughts about being controller <laughs> on the thing. But uh, as I understand it, now this is not, no, we're on TV, so I'll just say, that somewhere like two or three years worth of records have disappeared, either somebody hacked them, and uh, they're asking people to provide records like from four years ago, and you're saying, how would you give me a renewal of my license if you think I owe anything? But that's neither here nor here. Right. Ms. Learman can, she's young, she can straighten it she out. She can straighten it out, okay. On the basis then of your letter of December 16 and your proffer this morning, I vote to approve a 90-day uh, transfer hardship extension for this license. Based upon the proffer in the December 16, 2022 letter, I too would grant the transfer hardship extension in 90 days. Yes, based on the testimony, materials, and letter from the attorney, I vote to approve the request for a transfer hardship extension of 90 days. No, is that for the record? You might have seen a nice write up in the paper about their location in Annapolis. Arcade, and, and he's tell me that karaoke is now on. Yeah, you guys want to come sing? If I can sing secondhand, Rose, <laughs> stay on key. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. That concludes this matter before the board. Moving back in order, calling item number 19 on the regular items. Bayless Holdings, LLC, trading as trade name pending. Premises are located at 708 South Bayless Street. Holders of a Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. This is a request for a 90-day transfer hardship extension under the provisions of Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-1705B. Hurdle. Uh, Abraham Hurdle, behalf of Bayless Holdings, LLC. My client couldn't be here today. She indicated that she may or may not have COVID. She's looking into it, and I wasn't sure if we needed a postponement with regards to this. The reason for our request isn't a permitting issue. The building burned down about a week after our previous hearing, and we've been kind of scrambling for five months to figure out <clears throat> how to proceed forward. Um, that's why we're asking for 90-day extension. I anticipate we'll be back here for something else at some point in the future, but that's the reason that we are here today. Mr. No questions. Uh, all right. Mr. Hurdle, on the basis of your letter of December 12, 2022, and your proffer this morning, I vote to approve a 90-day hardship transfer hardship extension for this BG7 license. Based upon the proffer, the December 12, 2022 letter, I, too, would approve the request for a transfer hardship extension of 90 days. That's based on the testimony, materials, and the letter from the attorney. I also vote to approve the request for a transfer hearts for extension of 90 days. No, and unlike Melvin Kadensky, I believe that the comptroller is doing a wonderful job and will continue to do so. <laughs> I think he's leaving, so he's not. He's always saying that, you know? Uh, no, as if it's for the record. <laughs> That concludes this matter before the board. Shall I call the next matter, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Item number 20 on the regular items, JWH Bars LLC trading as Lighthouse Tavern. Premises are located at 1224 to 26 South Clinton Street. This is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license and a request for a 90-day transfer hardship extension under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-1705B. 
Thank you, Stephen W. Fogel, on behalf of the applicant, uh, Mr. Harkinish, should be happy to proffer. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, you approved uh, this transfer on or about June tw uh, 23rd of last year. Mr. Harkinish uh, came up close to the wire. Uh, he still needs one document and an agency that will not be identified, sent him a document that had a trade name on it instead of an LLC name on a sales and use tax certificate, so they're getting that straightened. Uh, he should be uh, approved within 30 days. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. No questions. Uh, all right, thank you, Mr. Uh, Fogelman. On the basis then of your letter to the board of December 15 and your prior for this morning, I vote to approve a 90-day transfer hardship extension for this BG7 license. Based on the prof based upon the proffer, the December 15, 2022 letter, I too would grant the request for a trans transfer hardship extension of 90 days. Yes, based on the testimony, materials, and letter from the attorney, I also vote to approve the request for a transfer hardship extension of 90 days. No exhibits for the record. All right, thank you. Good luck, sir. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Shall we move back to the passed over item, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Calling the last matter on today's docket, recalling uh, case number six, or calling case number six of the regular items, Fishtail Spirits LLC trading as Fishtail Spirits. Proposed premises are located at 3800 East Lombard Street, number 13. This is a, an amended application to transfer ownership and location of a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license presently located at 628 to 30 South Broadway to 3800 East Lombard Street, number 13. Okay. Council? Thank you. Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of the applic applicant, Krishna Chetri. Okay. So I just want to be very clear right now for the record. Uh, we're here today on an amended application. Uh, the only issue before the board is the amendment. Um, the, we heard this case previously. It's on appeal um, on the merits. So let's go forward on the amendment. No, Mr. Chairman, no we're going forward on the amendment, Mr. Messel. This is not an amendment. This is a new application. There's a total change of an applicant. There's a different corporation here. Um, the last time this case was before the board is a WebEx. The protestants did not have a fair opportunity to present their case. We were totally Fine. muted out. Uh, there was about 20 or 30 people that wanted to have an opportunity to speak. Uh, that case is on today. appeal, Mr. Mask. Pardon me? The case is on appeal. It's in the circuit court. That case is on appeal, but... I, so I, wanna, I, don't, I, I have no jurisdiction over that case. I want to proffer for the record that this store is proposed locations within 300 feet of a church. That You're was an issue that you raised previously, and it was a zoning board issue. It was resolved by the zoning board. It's not in our purview. Well, that, no, I, most respectfully, I don't believe it was resolved by the zoning board. It's still a church. A church exists at this location. It's existed there for um, since uh, 19... Um, well, anyway, I want to hear the amendment. I want to hear the issue on the amendment, so go ahead. Please yes, go thank forward. You. Um, Why are we amending? Well, Mr. Mr. I want to hear on the amendment. Yes. I'm running this hearing. I thank you. I, I can swear my client or proffer. Proffer. Okay, yes, this is uh, an LLC uh, that was started, uh, that was changed for business reasons. It is in good standing, this Fishtail Spirits LLC. Okay. This case was heard March 10th, 2022, right? And we approved it? That's correct, Your the Honor. The only change is the difference in the LLC? That's correct, Your right. Honor. Do you want to be heard on the LLC issue, Mr. Maslin? Uh, Your Honor, I don't believe this gentleman is a fit and proper person to be an applicant. We believe that he lives at, uh, in Baltimore County, not in Baltimore City. Um, I have a, a listing of his residence. He lives with his wife in the Perry oh, Hall that's region. Where I'm in. Okay. That's and, where I'm uh, in. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give and the statements that you make to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Mr. Fogelman, let's take him through direct, and then we'll have Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chetri, what is your current address? 620 South Broadway. All right, have you, all right, and have you been a resident of that address since July 1st, 2021? Yes. Do you have a driver's license with that address on it? Yes. Are you registered to vote at that address? Yes. All right, I have nothing further. Thank you. Cross. Mr. Chetri, how do you get into that residence? I live there. You live there. Where's the door? There's a back door and front door. There's a back door and front door. Did yes. you sleep there last night? Yes. All right. If we brought your wife in here today, would she say that you slept in, in Perry Hall and not there? No. Uh, are you married? Yes. 
Does your wife live with you there? No. Who lives in the Perry Hall address? My family. Your family? My it, kid, I have three kids and wife there. And they, they all live there? Yes. But you live in Baltimore City? Yes. All right. Are you aware that that property is not zoned um, for uh, any type of residential use? There's a liquor store in the present on the first floor of that present of, of that property. Are you aware of that? Yes. Right. And uh, who do you pay your rent to? My cousin. And what's his name? Haji Karki. And is that the gentleman who you're buying this license from? Yeah, that's my family. Oh, so this license is coming from the location where you, uh, are, where you represent that you live. Yeah, upstairs is residential, first floor is business. All right. And you established your residence upstairs where the license is coming from uh, about two weeks prior to your filing the prior application, is that correct? Is that when you established it? No prompting, Mr. Uh, <laughs> well, are you asking when he moved there? Yes. When did you move there? Since uh, 2021 July. I, I can't hear you. 2021 July. 2021 July. Okay. Yeah. Now, the, um, I'll show you a record from the... Um, State Department assessment taxation shows this uh, property to be um, uh, commercial with no uh, residential um, zoning at 626 South Broadway. Is that where you live? 628. You live at 628? Yeah, we, we want both property. And not, we want uh, 626 property. My family want that too. Your, fa your family owns that also? And the, uh, the, you listed prior that you lived, your residence was at, um, in the Perry Hall address, is that correct? When you yes. originally filed your application? Yes. I, I own property in Howard County, Baltimore County, and I live in Baltimore City. So I'm, I have a plan to buy property in Baltimore City as well. Is under contract absolutely right now. Mm -hmm. Do you receive mail at the Baltimore City address? Yes. And it's your testimony under oath that your wife lives uh, in, in Perry Hall and you she spend does. the nights in, um, in this establishment. How many apartments are there in that building? We have thir three floors. You have three floors? First floor has a business and Second and third is residential. And how much do you pay in rent? My cousin do all the billing. No, how much do you pay in rent? My, I work there as a manager. I handle the business. You handle the business in, in, um, on Broadway? Yes, Broadway and uh, Howard, Howard Street too. All right, do you, do you have gas electric service there in your name? No, my cousin, on the, he's on a lease. So he does all the billing. I know, but do you have gas and electric service there? Yeah, I do. You do, in your name? Not in my name. Not in your name. So you don't have gas and electric service there. Um, you're saying you get mail there? Yes. Um, how much rent do you pay your cousin? Objection, I think it's been asked. Well, he hasn't answered it. Well, uh, so first of all, the testimony is that he's living there. Um, whether he's paying rent or not, why is that relevant? Well, uh, Judge, I don't believe that the man, gentleman actually living says his, or his cousin owns the property. He says he works there, but I don't believe there's any uh, affirmative evidence that he actually lives there. Was there any evidence that he doesn't? Uh, the uh, uh, the residential, the I mean, the only testimony that he, I heard was that he lives there. All right, Do you well, have the any testimony that he doesn't? The statements under oath where he filed his um, corporation and listed his residence in the Perry Hall area. And what, what are the dates of those? Um, that was when he filed the prior, the Calica Enterprises. What year was that? Uh, that was filed in, uh, 
September the 23rd, 20, 21. I'll show you a document where the Coleco Enterprises, and you listed on here, um, you're living at 3725 Perry Hall Road. No, that's my accountant did that. Your accountant did that, okay. Um, because I have five other business, so it's on the, like when I, when I call, like he put out that address. So that was an incorrect address? All right. I don't know if this is a uh, exhibit, if could your honor be received. No objection. Anything else on the where he lives? Um, could your honor like I'd like to offer his um, the SDA T printout showing his home address to be in Perry Hall. I believe he's already testified that his wife lives there. And yeah, he testified. He, 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 own, he owns the property. His family lives there. And is that house in Perry Hall titled in your name and your wife's name? Yes. All right. Okay. Do you have a question, Commissioner? Yes. Uh, I don't want to be a dead horse, but Mr. Pogram, the attorney, did you state earlier that your client's driver's license is that address and what other and, and voter registration both of which pr was provided in evidence at the at the prior portion of this hearing and even to wit um i, I don't know if i need to cross ex or, or redirect but he just served on a jury on a circuit court trial last month in the baltimore city circuit court thank you mr chair do you have anything further on whether he's qualified uh, no, that, that would be it on the uh, on his re okay. on his uh, residence. Room. Anything else? No, thank All you, right. Your Honor. All right. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, uh, the proffer from counsel and the testimony received, I vote to approve the amended application to transfer ownership and location of a Class A BWL license, presently located at 62830 South Broadway to 3800 East Lombard Street, number 13. Your Honor, please. There, there was a. Um, Wait a minute. The commissioners have to rule. No. Based upon uh, the uh, application before us, the testimony received, I too would approve this amended application to transfer ownership and location of a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license presently located at 628 th to 630 South Broadway to 3800 East Lumbar Street, number 13. Yes, based on the testimony materials provided today, I also vote to approve the amended application to transfer ownership and location of a Class A BWL license presently located at 628 to 30 South Broadway to 3800 East Lombard Street, uh, Your number 13. Your Honor, please, I'd like to proffer that we strenuously object to how this hearing's been handled. I would suggest that notice when notice went out in this matter, it indicated that the applicant had to show public needed accommodation. The community association has provided a letter in opposition, which should be in your file, which the uh, board apparently is, is not considering at this time. Uh, also, a petition in opposition to this uh, application was submitted by myself, and I'd like an opportunity to submit the original signatures at this time, as I stated in a letter in correspondence that, um, that I submitted to the board, and I'd like the board to acknowledge that they did receive the uh, the uh, protest for the Highland Town uh, Community Association. Well, I have a Believe. packet of materials here. They'll, all of these will be received. What do you uh, what do you offer? That's a, a petition. Okay, uh, that'll be received as well. Yeah, as I said to you earlier, received to be made part of this record. The opposition here. Okay, as I as I stated earlier, as far as I'm concerned, the matter was heard in March of 2022. It went up on appeal to the Circuit Court for Baltimore City. If you prevail on appeal, maybe we'll be back. Um, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Uh, Mr. Blenny, does that conclude our? Yes, I'm going to call the exhibits real quickly. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Ms. Russell. Okay. I'm going to call the exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Petition of Opposition. 2, Letter from Gary Maslin, dated 1-10-2023. 3, Email in Opposition from Highland Town Community Association. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. That concludes this matter before the board. Um, 
Applicants and council will receive instructions from this agency on how to legally complete this transfer, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. That concludes all matters on today's docket, Mr. Chairman. Right. And uh, board. I'm going to read the adjournment. Thank yes, sir. The Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City shall stand in recess until Thursday, January 26, 2023 at 10.30 a.m. Okay, thank you. Thank you to uh, everybody who participated today, to the members of the board and all the staff and everyone, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you.